Hey everybody, and in this video I want to take you through an application problem uh, using trig functions that requires you to kind of uh, transform and understand uh, sinusoidal functions. So here's the question. It says a pendulum swings back and forth 10 times in 8 seconds. It swings through a total horizontal distance of um, 40 centimeters and then the that's the information we're given and then part a says sketch a graph of this motion for two cycles beginning with the pendulum at the end of its swing b describe the transformations necessary to transform y equals sine x into the function you graphed and then c write an equation that models the situation so uh the first thing uh, i think is to understand this statement about swinging through a total horizontal distance of um 40 centimeters. So when you picture like a, a, a pendulum, uh, let's just say here's a string with a pendulum on the end of it, and it will swing back and forth and back and forth. And if you measure the horizontal distance of its swing, you could say, well, that total horizontal distance between the two swings is 40 centimeters, which means that it, it swings 20 to the right and 20 to the left. OK, so that is what you're saying. So in, a, in essence, the maximum distance it will get away from center uh, either way um, in terms of horizontal distance is is actually 20 centimeters. OK, so that's important because what that allows us to do is picture like what I call a maximum and minimum value on a sinusoidal graph. And that's what we're looking at right here we're looking at trying to draw this as a sinusoidal graph because a pendulum swinging is an ultimate example of a repetitive motion which is what periodic functions are all about um, trying to model okay so if we're going to come up eventually with our end goal of having an equation of a sinusoidal function that is modeled by the sine function y equals sine x that means that we need to first of all get all of the relevant information that would allow us to do this. So the first thing it is, it says sketch a graph of the motion for two cycles. So, so what I think that the first thing you wanna do then is you wanna to say to yourself that, well, uh, let's just pick an arbitrary number of tick marks and say that that is 20 to the right and that that is 20 to the left. Okay, we'll call that negative 20. And, um, they want two cycles of this swinging motion, but hang on for a second because we're gonna have, um, we'll just put like, we won't put height on the y-axis, we'll just put like, um, you know, what, what can we put? Well, let's just, let's leave it for now as, um, as y, okay? In other words, the, the horizontal distance from the center, actually, I'll tell you what, it's better to put it as h, h for horizontal, h. OK, and then T will be time in seconds, but we're not going to put eight seconds on our horizontal axis because we need to know the period of this graph. Now, this pendulum completes 10 cycles. In other words, it swings 10 times in eight seconds. So the amount of time per cycle would be 8 over 10, which is 0 0.8. So the period of the pendulum is 0 0.8 seconds, okay? Because the amount of time it takes to complete a full swinging motion back and forth would be described as the amount of time it takes to complete a full cycle. And by definition, the, mine, the amount of time it takes a, a periodic function to complete a full cycle is known as its period. So with that being said, if the period is eight seconds, what you also really always want to remember about trig sinusoidal functions is that you want to split them into quarters, right? Because like the quarter values represent the key points in a, in a trig function, right? Like if you think about the graph of y equals sine x, at the first quarter, it reaches its maximum. At its halfway point, it's back to the minimum or back to the axis. At its three quarter point, it's at its minimum. And at its four quarter point, it completes its cycle. So regardless of what the period of a function is, you wanna split it into quarters because um, basically the key events happen at each quarter of its kind of rotation, right? So with that being said, let's just go ahead and split 0.8 into four quarters. So the first quarter would be 0 0.2, right? 
and then you'd have 0 0.4, then you'd have 0 0.6, and then you'd have 0 0.8, and then they want two cycles, so 0, uh, 1.0, 1.2, 1.4, 1.6. And so I'll just put in 0 0.8 right here, and I'll put in 1.6 right there. And th that would represent the total uh, amount of time, uh, also known as total elapsed time, that will have had to have occurred uh, when two cycles are complete of this pendulum swinging back and forth. Now, um, we're going to sketch two cycles, and we, when we sketch those two cycles, we're also going to remember that it says the cycle begins with the pendulum at the end of its swing. So not in the middle. So that means we either start the cycle here or here. And I'll just start the cycle at the bottom. Okay, I'll start the cycle there. And then at the first quarter, it will hit the axis. At the second quarter, it'll be maximum. At the third quarter, axis. Fourth quarter, minimum. First quarter, axis. Second quarter, maximum. Third quarter, axis. Fourth quarter, minimum. See what I'm saying is that the important stuff happens at the quarter points. And then I just sketch it out, right? And I've got, I've got what it wants, which is two cycles of the periodic motion. So what are the transformations? If, if I used sine to graph this, and you know, uh, just between us, I would not use sine to graph this because cosine would be far easier because the cosine function naturally starts at its maximum. So all you would have to do is reflect it, but we won't tell the textbook manufacturer, right? Just keep that between us. But in any way, the point is, is that uh, sine, we won't let them in on our secret, but sine here is not the best choice, right? But Anyway, what would we have to do? Well, the first thing we'd have to do is we, we'd have to remember that sine is um, um, a function that has an amplitude of 1, but this function has an amplitude of 20. So number 1 would be vertically stretch by a factor of 20, which is you know pretty significant. So I can write that in. And I say factor, don't say by 20, say a factor of 20, because when you vertically stretch, what you're doing is you're taking your y values and you're multiplying them. Let's see if I can get that to move um, by 20, right? So vertically stretch by a factor of 20. Okay, what else? Well, um, we are also, um, when we think about it, um, the sine function should complete a full cycle in uh, two pi radians, but it's, com it's, it's actually a lot less than that, right? So what we need is a K value here. If we're gonna talk about horizontal compression, because the graph has been horizontally compressed, what we need to say is period equals two pi over K. And the period of the function, as we know, is 0 0.8, right? So 0 0.8 equals 2 pi over K. So K is going to equal um, 2 pi over 0 0.8. And 2 divided by 0 0.8 is 2.5. So K is going to equal 2.5 pi. Remember, this time k actually equals 2.5 pi. So if a graph had a k value of 2, you would say that it's been horizontally compressed by a factor of 1 half. If a graph has a... Um, if a graph has a uh, k value of 2.5, um, what you could say is that it has been horizontally compressed um, by a factor of 1 over 2.5 pi. Or if you prefer, 1 over um, one over 5 halves pi, okay? And so, like, it, it's, it's actually quite a confusing statement. I fully understand that, but that's what you kind of need to say here. You need to indicate to the teacher 
in this case me, that you understand that it's been a horizontal compression. And so that's what we'll say, horizontally um, compressed. Okay, now by a factor of one over five over two pi. But one over five over two is the same thing, is the same thing as two fifths, okay? So I would say the best way to put this would be to say that it's been horizontally compressed by a factor of two fifths pi. Okay, and in case that's confusing, what I'm actually saying is one divided by five over uh, two point five pi, and I guess that would be an acceptable answer too. But I think the the two fifths pi one kind of sounds a little smarter. But anyway, the final thing then that we have to account for is horizontal translation because. A sine graph does not start out at its maximum. A sine graph, when you look at it, it doesn't matter what the period is, a sine graph reaches its maximum at the first quarter point, right? Well, what should be occurring at the first quarter has now been shifted to the halfway point. So in other words, it's as if we would want the first quarter to represent the maximum because the sine graph starts at the axis, reaches its maximum, and then goes back down. So we would expect the first maximum to occur at 0 0.2, which is the first quarter of the period, but the first quarter or the first maximum in this sine graph does not occur then. It occurs uh, at 0.4. So in other words, the graph has been shifted by 0.2 units to the right. Okay, the graph has been shifted by 0.2 units to the right. And so that we are also going to say here, horizontal shift. Because we're looking, we're lining up where the first maximum occurs and comparing it to where it should occur. And it should occur at 0.2, but it's occurring at 0.4. So horizontal shift of, right, um, 0.2 units right. And once we got that, uh, what we have is we have an opportunity to solve this final part, which is the equation. And remembering that uh, we have the horizontal distance. Let's put that in a bigger font now. Horizontal distance as a function of time equals 20 sine. Now remember our k value, 5 over 2 pi. t, and we've shifted it 2 point, 0 0.2 units right. And that's it, there's no uh, vertical translation, okay? And so that answers our question. That equation right there models the uh, projected horizontal distance of the um, pendulum from its center point over uh, time based upon the information we were given. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, please ask follow-up questions if you have them, and um, thanks for watching.